người bài báo quốc tế cùng nhiều các cái đầu sách chuyên khảo khác về hô hấp. À, giáo sư cũng có rất nhiều nghiên cứu về các lĩnh vực như viêm phổi, COPD, dạng phế quản, ghép phổi, về bệnh uh, sơ nang vân vân. Hôm nay thì uh, giáo sư sẽ trao đổi với chúng ta những cái nội dung hết sức quan trọng trong cái uh, tiếp cận chẩn đoán và điều trị ho ra máu. À, xin trân trọng kính mời giáo sư. Thank you very much. <coughs> It's my pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for the invitation. Um, uh, I would try to, to give you in the, in the next 20 minutes uh, some uh, ideas about the diagnosis and therapeutic approach to MOF disease. Uh, these are my disclosure. Um, what about definition? Uh, definition is quite interesting because uh, we define uh, the expectoration of blood or blood streaked sputum from the lower uh, respiratory tract. The terms you know, derives from the ancient Greek uh, word that is uh, uh, ima, meaning blood, and thesis, meaning uh, spitting. And the presence of hemoptysis, we know very well, is very frightening for our patients. They, yes, they uh, come to us and very worried about having blood in the sputum. Is what? Yeah, no problem. Uh, I would like to start with some key points that I, I think are very important to set the scene about the, the problem of hemotysis. Uh, the first point is that uh, hemotysis may vary very much from a very minor problem to a very important problem for our patients, giving us to a, a life-threatening condition that can be very severe for our patients. The problem is that we, the definitions are quite, quite, quite discussed uh, because uh, the, uh, we are still discussing about the uh, volume of, of, uh, of hemotysis and uh, if there is any, any correlation between the volume and, and the life threatening event. And certainly one of the point is that the uh, epidemiology is changing. Uh, in, at least in the uh, industrialized country like uh, Euro the European and the Americans, uh, certainly tuberculosis is no more the, the main problem for hemotysis, but we have lung cancer and we have bronchiectosis. Uh, in your country, probably t TB is still a, a problem and bronchiectosis is clearly a problem uh, for all of us. So. Looking to the uh, definition of severity, this is the one of the, of the problem. As, as I said before, we don't have a universal consensus about the quantification and severity. Uh, what we can say is that hemotysis may be mild if the volume of blood is less than 5 ml, and may be moderate uh, if you uh, have a 20 ml. And this could be uh, in interesting when you go to massive hemoptysis. Here the definitions are quite different. You can see uh, in the slide we have the massive involvement of the uh, uh, hemoptysis, uh, maybe 100 ml for in uh, 24 hours, uh, uh, or in, you, you know, the, the problem is that if you have a very massive hemoptysis, you can uh, lose one, one liter in the 24 hours. And this means that you are in a life threatening situation. Uh, I think the main problem is that uh, when you ask to your patients, coming to you saying, I had the blood in my sputum, and you said, how much? You will say, well, I, I have my hand shift and I have a, maybe half a spoon, a spoon, something like that, or I have a lot of blood, a lot of blood. So it's difficult for us, it is difficult for the patient to quantify <coughs> because we don't recollect uh, usually the, the, uh, the amount of sputum. Unless you have a cystic fibrosis patient that collect everything and they col you can see exactly what the, the, the problem is. I know that cystic fibrosis is not your problem, uh, but in our country it is a big problem. Uh, so the, I think the main point is to, to go to the clinical point of view. And clearly, you have to take in account the hemotysis that lead to clinical consequences, mainly respiratory failure, airway obstruction, 
and hemodynamic instability. These are the, the three points that are very important. Certainly, the amount is important, but also the clinical consequences are very important. Let's go to the source. Blood comes from the uh, bronchial circulation, about 90% of the cases, uh, from the pulmonary circulation, 5% more or less, but you can have uh, also some uh, hemothesis coming from non-bronchial system circulation, maybe inter intercostal arteries, uh, thoracic arteries, and so on. Please take in account when you plan to, in, to intervene in your patient that 5% of the patient has a spinal artery that originates from the bronchial artery. This may be important when you try to, you know, the uh, interventional uh, approach uh, that you can have collateral effect, side effect, very important in your sp spinal cord related to uh, the maneuver. The, uh, the etiology. Well, there are a lot of, of possible causes. First, inf inf infection. In your uh, country, tuberculosis is, is certainly important. Fungal infection are very important. Uh, lung abscess and bronchiectasis. In my country, bronchiectasis is the second uh, major cause of hemoptysis. Neoplasma are very important. Bronchogenic car uh, carcinoma is, is one of, of, the, of the main uh, sources of hemoptysis. And you can have also metastasis and carcinoid. And sometimes your intervention may cause uh, 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 hemoptysis, maybe the use of EGF uh, medications. And then you have vascular or vasculitis problem, uh, maybe pulmonary embolism or maybe uh, uh, artery malformation, uh, granulomatosis of Wegener, and so on. The other point is that you induce hemoptysis through bronchoscopy, uh, biopsy, for example, or a, a CT-guided biopsy. You can have hemoptysis after this uh, intervention. And then you have a coagula coagulopathy, but uh, maybe pathological dysfunction or anticoagulant therapy are very important. Where you have to take in account what your patient is taking. And where do you get to go to the diagnosis? Uh, which kind of tool you have to use? Uh, this is a, a nice review, just pub uh, published last year in Journal of Thoracic Disease, uh, looking to the different, uh, comparing the different diagnostic tools, and. Uh, we have two problems. We have to identify the bleeding uh, site. Second is understanding the uh, underlying causes. Look at this. Chest X-ray is almost unuseful. Uh, CT and bronchoscopy are probably the two tools that, that show the highest uh, uh, sensitivity and specificity in detecting. Uh, the uh, site of ble bleeding. For understanding the underlying cause, I think CT is the, is the tool. So in this patient, I, I will show you CT and bronchoscopy are quite important. Let's go to this uh, uh, paper. Uh, it's still the review I show you. Uh, for massive uh, hemoptysis, they uh, divided the two in patient with acute respiratory failure a patient without acute respiratory failure. In both patients, the indication is go to ICU. If you have a massive hemoptysis, you must be in a very, very safe place. So ICU is the place to manage massive hemoptysis. And then you can go to the ABC of hemoptysis, look into uh, uh, coverage, you know, uh, the trying to, to identify the bleeding site, uh, try to uh, uh, avoid, uh, uh, intubate the patient, and so on. So there are a, a lot of, of things. And when you, the, the bleeding is localized, then you can go to endoluminal lesion or non-endoluminal lesion. In, and if you have an endoluminal lesion, you can use colsaline, you can use thermal ablation, and, and tampon, and use a, a, a stent to tamponate the, the, the bleeding. I show you this, this method, and certainly if you are successful, fine. If not, you have to re-evaluate uh, the case, maybe call the surgeon for an 
If you go to the other side, uh, and uh, you have a uh, non-localized bleeding, uh, you have to, to make a CT scan, and in this CT scan you can say, well, it appears not to be localized, but it's localized. And so I go to the uh, bleeding uh, uh, and look to how to, to deal with the, uh, the different causes of the, of the uh, bleeding, uh, maybe uh, trauma or whatever. And also in this case, the surgeon could be helpful. If you have a uh, bleeding not localized, in this case, you have to uh, follow up uh, very closely uh, and try to uh, understand what, what is around this, this uh, uh, amount of this. So, starting from the initial step, the ABC. Well, the first is protect airways. Second is, if the massive hematosis lead to hemodynamic instability, you have to stabilize your patient. Uh, it's uh, wise to put the patient in the lateral defibrillator position, uh, having the bleeding side down, so avoiding the blood going to the other line. Try to control any uh, coagulation uh, disease. Clearly this must be done in the ICU. And then you can ask to interventional radiology and the surgery, the surgeon to have a, a counsel. Intubation should be done with a double lumen, lumen uh, in a tube, so you can protect the, the, the airways in the best way. And clearly, you have the blood clot to, to, uh, to take in account. And uh, you can do with the bronchoscopy, you can uh, uh, pick up the, the, the blood and uh, make the airways free for uh, ventilation. This is very important, so bronchoscopy may be useful. The other point is to uh, the balloon tampon. And it is a Fogarty balloon catheter with a flexible fiber bronchoscope. Uh, you need a double lumen bronchoscope so you can put the ball on and instill uh, uh, cold saline or if you prefer vasoconstrictive uh, agents. So it's very important to have a, the possibility to do this. If you have a, a uh, an hematosis, you can see the balloon that is completely tamponing the, 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 uh, the problem. And you have a different uh, tools to uh, and uh, uh, use here. I report some of the, of the possible uh, uh, apparatus you can use. Uh, there are many. Uh, here, just to choose the, 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 the best one for you. And uh, when you think to topical uh, intervention, uh, not for massive hematosis for sure, well, you can use cold saline. This works very well. It's easy. Uh, not, a big problem, not a big problem. And then you can use uh, topical vasoconstructive uh, agents. Uh, epinephrine is fine. Uh, if you are rich, and you, have a, uh, you can use some, something new, uh, terlipressin or onipressin, uh, very nice to use because the uh, side effects are less for sure, but it costs more. In cystic fibrosis patients, we use a lot of tranexamic acid. Uh, this is an antifibrolytic agent. Uh, can be done by oral, can be used by oral or IV route. Uh, it can be also instilled in, in the lung. Uh, there is no experience out of the, of the field of CF, so uh, it's just for, for knowing you. And then you can use uh, some endobronchial uh, You can use stenting. You can use uh, endobronchial airway blockade using a silicone spigot or, uh, I don't know if I can show you. Doesn't look that well. Uh, maybe not here. So the, the stent, uh, the silicone, and the, in the uh, biocompatible glue, uh, uh, you can stop the the uh, the hematosis uh, using this this kind of, of tools. And uh, the other problem is that you have a cancer that is bleeding. What can you do? Well, you can have a, a couple of, of uh, possibilities through the bronchoscope. Uh, one is a argon plasma coagulation, this is exactly what you are seeing here. Uh, maybe it's uh, quite easy, it is a little bit cost, but uh, uh, it works very well. If you have a localized uh, bleeding from the, the, from the cancer site in a bronchogenic cancer, 
And the other problem, the other one is maybe cryotherapy. We have, I have uh, and no, no real experience in cryotherapy, uh, but it seems to work uh, in, the, in the same way. You can see that the, the effect is quite good. There's no more bleeding, and uh, the area has been coagulated. Uh, the treatment of choice of bleeding is clearly uh, artery embolization. And uh, this, uh, we have to use a super selective bronchial artery embolization, uh, which is now considered the, the treatment of choice. And, uh, and uh, again, some anatomy. Uh, usually, the patient has three bronchial artery uh, starting from the aorta. One is in the, in the uh, right, and two at the left. This is almost in uh, half of the patient, is the, the artery are in this way. And clearly is, is very important is, again, remember that in 5% of patients, the spinal artery originates from the bronchial artery. This means that if you selectively uh, you know, use embolization, you can have uh, the problem in the uh, spinal cord. So it's very important to take in account. CT scan is very important. Because you can see uh, the blood, you can see if it is, if it is no uh, cancer, it's just bleeding. So you need your uh, interven radiological intervention. And, uh, and you can reconstruct the, uh, the uh, uh, artery arch and you can identify the uh, source of bleeding in the right bronchial artery. And then you can do diagnostic angiography, and you can see the blood going out, and the, and the uh, contrast me medium going up, out here. So you can plan your intervention uh, with a selective angiography, with a microcatheter, and you can use, uh, for example, in this case, polyvinyl alkyl particles. You can use different uh, tools for uh, stopping the blood, and you can go there. And then you can have a post embolic angiography, and you can see there is no more blood in the lung. So the selective uh, uh, use of uh, uh, this, this kind of, of method is working. Again, pay attention of the 5% of patients that can have a problem using, using this, this kind of techniques. So, in conclusion, uh, Hemotysis is clearly still an important and, and uh, challenging medical issue. Uh, the uh, diagnostic modality is not very clear. I show you the results of the uh, chest X-ray, CT scan, and bronchoscopy. You have probably to put together a, a couple of these methods to have a, the, the, the best diagnosis in your patient. Uh, clearly, sometimes you have to discuss with the radiologist, with the surgeon, the, the, the case. <coughs> in a fast way because the patient is bleeding, uh, but certainly it's important. Uh, a, a bronchial artery embolization is still uh, so probably the best way to approach the, uh, the management of severe or massive persistent hemoptysis. Uh, bronchoscopy can help you. Uh, I show you the, the, the possible result with the, you know, the balloon, with the, uh, uh, the intervention with argon. Uh, uh, so you, do, you can do m m a lot of things with the bronchoscopy. You can e even use uh, rigid bronchoscopy. Uh, but certainly you have to mix the two and try to find the best way for your patient. And for this I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Blasi. <coughs> Professor Blasi has uh, uh, got an excellent presentation uh, about the how to treat the hemoptysis, the diagnostic aim for the location for the bleeding and the cause of the bleeding. And the treatment initial step is the location of the airways and stabilize the patient. For the intervention uh, tools, we can use the development intubation, balloon tamponade, cold saline, topical vasoconstrictive agent, uh, tranexamic acid, and endobronchial stand and tamponade. We can also uh, decide the PPC 
hemoptysis or cryotherapy and the treatment of choice of the hemoptysis is bronchial artery embolization. Thank you very much, Professor Blasi. I mean, sir, we still have a uh, source time for questions and comments from the floor. Have you got any questions for Professor Francesco Blasi, please? Các quý vị có câu hỏi gì xin đặt cho ông vì chúng ta vẫn còn 5 phút nữa để có thể thảo luận được. Các thầy cô, anh Thọ. À, xin mời bác sĩ Thọ. Em đưa mic em ơi, chuyển mic. Uh, okay, I, I, I speak in Vietnam for me first and after that I will speak in English. <cười> Uh, thì cái cái uh, khi mà bệnh nhân bị ho ra máu á, mà mình làm nội soi để can thiệp giống nhau thì một trong những vấn đề của mình là bác sĩ là không uh, uh, bệnh nhân sẽ bị uh, không ổn định huyết động hoặc là bệnh nhân sẽ bị ho nhiều ho máu nhiều nữa thì mình không biết là những bệnh nhân như thế thì mình nên uh, thực hiện cái nội soi đó thì mình nên thực hiện ở phòng nội soi bình thường hay là ở phòng ICU hay là ở trong cái bệnh nhân mỗi So far, the massive hemoptysis when we perform the bronchoscopy to uh, do some intervention. So one of the concern is the uh, uh, hemodynamic, uh, hemodynamic instability. So where we should perform the bronchoscopy for the patient? We should perform in the ICU or in the uh, uh, operating room or just the uh, normal bronchoscopy suite. Well, it depends on the, on the experience of your team. Uh, uh, I would not stay in a uh, uh, world without the possibility to have an, an anesthesiologist <coughs> on my side. Uh, I, I would prefer to have in an uh, operating room or in ICU. Uh, this because, you know, a massive hematosis can lead, as you said, to uh, hemodynamic instability. And uh, sometimes you need to intubate the patient uh, and uh, so you need your anesthesiology on your side and uh, so ICU or operating room are the two sides where you have to, to manage the, the, the massive hemoptysis. I would not say in, in, in a simple room with a bronchoscopy in my hand. <laughs> Professor Blasi, I have one burning question. Uh, during the bronchoscopy, we find the blood clot. Uh, sometimes we are uh, worried to take off the blood clot because of the new bleeding. Uh, how can we decide it? Yeah, uh, this is an important question. Uh, I think that uh, uh, the clot in the other side of the lung, you should take it without any problem. Okay. Uh, when you go to uh, the uh, affected side, uh, you need the bronchoscopy with two lumen, uh, so you can uh, instill uh, uh, vasoconstructive uh, or cold saline. Certainly, you have a risk when you pick up the, the, the clot. So, uh, it, as I said before, anesthesi anesthesiologist on your side. <laughs> uh, if there is a, a game with a massive blo uh, hematosis or uh, uh, blood, uh, you have to intubate the patient. And uh, so there is a risk, but I think if you uh, uh, correctly use uh, a vasoconstructive plus a cold saline, at the end of the day you can control. Uh, but taking the clot is important because you, the ventilation is again uh, ready. So but any, any of this maneuver must, must be done in a, uh, in a safe area. Uh, I, I fully agree with you. Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very thank much, you. Professor Francesco Plazi. And now, may I introduce and invite uh, Dr. Anna Isin Mahana from uh, Indonesia, please, with a topic about the role of interventional pulmonary 